Pinwheel sandwiches. They're easy to make and perfect to serve at your summer cookouts. Here to show us how to make a sweet and savory pinwheel is personal chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com. We're going to start with the savory because that's dinner, right? You know, that's the thing. You just save dessert for second. That's exactly how it yes. should be. Of course, some people think it's the opposite, but... That's okay to break the rules, but is. what yep. are we making today? We are doing, I'm calling it a Mediterranean uh, a pinwheel wrap. And here's the thing, it's simple, it's healthy, uh, and all the ingredients you often have lying around or just a different, better way to present them. Yeah. So I just want to also mention that all the foods today are from our friends at Whole Foods in Hadley, and we start out with some terrific tortillas. Now you can also use, uh, you've seen the lavash bread, but anything that you can roll up is a great way to start. Now there's different sizes. There's like the taco size, the fajita size. These are just the, the 10 inch round. Is that what they yeah, are? Yeah, actually, I think these are more uh, uh, eight, eight or nine, inch? something okay. like that. Yeah, but not the huge, huge burrito size. You can do that, and actually, that'll work out just fine, uh, especially if you want to have a ton more. This is kind of optimal. It's easy to work with. You don't have to worry about things falling out the sides as as much. Okay. Now, but you mentioned also the small little uh, taco size. Those are too small because everything is just going to blow out the sides and just too too small to work with. Okay. So I like to start with a little bit of hummus. Uh, you can start with baba ganoush. You can start with whatever you want to schmear on here. Uh, and again, it's healthier than just throwing some mayonnaise on, and it's all protein, and it just really tastes right, great. Right, so really be generous with it. Oh, absolutely. Yep, you don't want to be uh, skimpy with it, so just kind of schmear it on that way. And is this a flavored hummus or just any kind? I mean, you could, right? Use yes, I went just with, with the simple one. Actually, my personal favorite I didn't go with today, although I kind of did, is I like the uh, roasted red pepper hummus. However, I roasted some peppers to put in here, so we're going to get the same effect, but that really is my favorite. Perfect. And then some turkey. Just throw some turkey on there, and now I uh, start throwing other things on. I've shredded some lettuce. My problem is always the the amount, the portion. I always put way too much. So it's good to kind of see you do it so you know what is the right amount to put in so that it doesn't completely fall apart. And that's the thing, because actually, that, that's true. There are two hints to this. Uh, one of them is you do want it to go thinner than, than you would think, because you're going to be rolling it up. You think, well, a mounded high sandwich. You won't be able to roll it. But the second thing is, uh, it seems almost things gravitate towards the center, but you really want them spread out, because mm -hmm. if they are really in the center, uh, it, it's going to be impossible to roll and will be uneven. Okay. So I've got some salad cucumbers here, and I was having a philosophical discussion with somebody recently on whether you peel cucumbers or don't peel cucumbers. Don't you have those kind of philosophical? Yeah, it's a very, very deep conversation. I do. I travel yes. in very deep circles. <laughs> And the thing is that uh, I prefer not peeling them, but when you've got these little salad cucumbers, also called uh, pickling cucumbers, and they're available all year round, but mm -hmm. our local ones are coming up uh, in the next uh, within a number of weeks. Uh, the, you don't have to peel them. They're not chewy. They're not stringy. And often there's bitterness yes. in a lot of the other ones. You won't find that with these. So you don't have to uh, worry about doing that Yeah, step. it's the bitterness, but I, I do like to keep the, it's easier too, to keep the um, it, exactly. outside w peel on. One less step to do. Yes. So, uh, and, and especially how you look at pickling and you don't see pickles as being uh, peeled. Try right. saying that quickly. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's hard. Peeling pickles. Pickling pe <laughs> Especially in the morning. Exactly. So everything is here, and if you want to press it down a bit, you can. And really, just start rolling. You already got a scraggler here. I, I already do. What we do, we'll, we'll get it back in. Okay. And, the, and the great thing is, and see, I overfilled this. Just what I told you not to do, but it's going to work out just fine. <laughs> because you knew that you had me here. I, I knew you had, you had here. to feed me. And that's the beauty of television, because <laughs> the camera will say, he overfilled that. But uh, now also, you, you don't want to like squeeze type. You want to kind of pull in, because you don't want a lot of... Uh, air flopping around there. You want this to be a nice, solid, nice and cozy. Nice and cozy. That's exactly it. Kind of like you know, rolling up in a sleeping bag. Right. So like when you get yeah tucked in. It, it, that's exactly it. Getting tucked in in your sleeping bag. Now you also notice the all important uh, throwback to the '60s, the frilly toothpick, mm -hmm. because that makes it taste better. <laughs> and just put it on like that. And, and if you want, uh, you can either trim off the end uh, and have it as a snack while you're making this, or uh, just include that. And you okay. want your knife to be sharp, because if it's not, it's just going to press down and mush it, and it's just going to end badly. So this is with a nice, clean cut. You see the pinwheel goes through. Now, sometimes the toothpick might not go all the way through. So this is the time where you want to push it through to make sure that it holds together. If this is so, it's, well, it's really healthy. Everything in here is good for you. There's nothing that's bad for you. Yes. So it's a really healthy snack, and it's really beautiful. 
It's a great presentation, and also, this might sound kind of flippant, but it's also a, a great way of portion control. If you have a full roll-up, you can eat the full roll-up. You might cut the roll-up in half. That's still a lot of food. This way, you can portion it out. You can also stretch it further. You've got guests coming, a couple extra guests. Uh, next thing you know, you've got the same amount of food, more people to feed, and you cut it into different portions, and people are both not overeating, but also, everybody can have enough to eat. Exactly. So, it looks great. It's simple to make. It's healthy. And uh, you can feed a crowd. Yes, you sure can. And kids will think it's absolutely adorable okay. to have their own little pinwheels. Thanks yes. so much, Chef okay. Bill. Glad and we're going to be back with you in just a bit. You're going to show us how to make a sweet pinwheel. Uh, yes, exactly. A dessert pinwheel. Looking forward to it. We're back with Chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com. Now we're making fudge Sunday pinwheels. We already made the turkey Mediterranean pinwheel. Yes, we did. Now we're on to dessert. We are because, you know, dessert comes after sometimes uh, the main course. <laughs> and I was thinking about a dessert one and sweet. And I like the idea of sometimes taking a visual that looks like it's something else. Like you see like a sweet pizza. Uh, it looks like a pizza, but it's a dessert. Well, the same kind of thing. Uh, but in this case, we're taking a hot fudge Sunday and we're taking you no know, ice cream and it's not hot and we're making it as a pinwheel roll-up. So what I've done, and I'll get to the whys and wherefores in a moment, what I've done is I've got some hot fudge sauce here. And uh, you know, my recipe uh, for this is uh, you know, on, the, on the Mass Appeal website. The great thing about this is it's so easy to make. You make it in about seconds. And as opposed to regular hot fudge, this is right from the refrigerator. So it's, it's something that you can just spread around just like that. So Spreadable chocolate. Spreadable chocolate. You know, it doesn't get any better than this. It's a good, good thing. It so you <laughs> spread it right on there and you don't want to heat it up. Don't want to heat it up. So it's like a cold fudge sundae. It, it, exactly, and uh, but but without the ice cream part. Right. And the great part about this is some people have said, well, why don't you just open up a jar of Nutella? Nutella is a beautiful thing. Don't get me wrong, but this is even better because it's your own hot fudge sauce, and it's just uh, it's great. And Plus, it's dark chocolate. Is it, that what this uh, is? This one, believe it or not, I just use chocolate chips with this. Oh. So, uh, but yes, it, it, it is dark chocolate. You use milk chocolate, whatever kind of chocolate you want to use. So now. You've got the, the hot fudges on there. What I've done here, uh, in place of the ice cream, because the advantage of this is, sure, everybody loves a hot fudge sundae, but you can put this out as a dessert. If you put out a hot fudge sundae, you're going to have a puddle in no time. You, yes. You can't and literally, it. you have to eat it within two minutes. Exactly. And believe me, that's a challenge that many people do quite well. But, <laughs> but if you're putting out desserts, people are coming to them, and you're sitting around having them, you don't want that puddle in two minutes. So you're going to get the same effect, the great flavor, without the puddle. Mm -hmm. That's how we'll promote this. Yes, the same the effect without the puddle. Right. It's perfect. So what I've done here is I've got some whipped cream cheese. If you don't have whipped cream cheese, but just regular cream cheese, just uh, let it sit out for a bit and, and you can, uh, it'll soften up. But what I've done is I've added some vanilla to this. And that's what gives it a little bit more, not, I'm not going to say it's ice cream, but it gives it more of that sweeter dessert flavor. It tastes flavor. amazing. I already snuck a taste of it. Yeah, just right. A little vanilla to your cream cheese makes a, a big difference. Exactly. So now, here's where you want to be a little bit careful, but not super careful. And as you spread it, if you want to just keep it uh, just white, uh, as opposed to it turning a little brown from the fudge, uh, you know, be a little more careful. However, we don't have to be careful because we're on television. And because it's all going to the same place, so you're all you're going to eat it. It's going to look in one taste bite anyway. Right, absolutely. Right. So just a smearing around the cream cheese. So that's like your vanilla ice cream. That's vanilla ice cream because it's cream cheese. We can say we're smearing it. Yep. And now uh, some fresh strawberries. You can slice these thinly, thickly, chop them into little pieces, but you just want to have them like this so you can roll it up. Okay. If you, you don't want to put a whole strawberry in there because that just makes it a little bit too oh, thick. Oh, yeah, that would just be way too difficult. It, too and much work, yes. Like you talked about in the previous segment, you want to make sure that you have it evenly spread out, not just in the middle for the rolling. Exactly. Make it easier to roll up. That's exactly it. So and now, that's it. And that's it. Doesn't get any easier than that. And so you again, got your ice cream, your hot fudge, and your strawberry on top. Yep. And see how, how, how we, normally it's trying to push the strawberries out. So I'm just holding my fingers down there on the strawberries just to keep everybody still attached in there. Mm -hmm. And and if it oozes, that's okay. Yeah, a little oozing is good. And, and it, 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 it just stretching out a little bit just to make sure there aren't any real air pockets in there. And uh, pop in a couple toothpicks just to hold it in place. You want to go all the way down to the bottom. You do just so it doesn't pop out in the bottom. Right. And if you want, you've got the end here where that's a bit oozing. But now I'm going to take another toothpick Let's here. Let's show the cross section here. And so just cut, cutting it down like that. And voila, you have the strawberry, the fudge, your hot fudge sundae. Pop in your mouth, one bite, two bites. Also, it's not messy at all to eat. And you've it's to great toothpick. to transport, too. It's easy to transport, just with a little foil over uh, or a little plaster wrap over the dish. 
And there you go to the host or hostess. You've got, you're bringing a great dessert that everybody's going to love. And it's just uh, pinwheels for dinner, pinwheels for dessert. It's just a delicious thing and it won't turn into a puddle. That's great. Thanks, That's Chef right. Bill. Thank you, Ashley. Great to have you here. Perfect for summer cookouts. And for a copy of this recipe and more, visit us online at mymassappeal.com.